Hello. If this were a live audience, I'd begin by saying, it's nice to see everyone wearing clothes. But even if I can't see you, I doubt that there are many watching who are not wearing them. We need clothes. Humans need to eat, a safe place to sleep, and clothes. They keep us warm and dry, we maintain a degree of modesty, or we can show others which tribe we belong to or how cool we are. Thousands of years before we settled down to farm, while we were still hunter-gatherers, we covered ourselves and we replaced animal skins with textiles that were comfortable, didn't impede our hunting or farming, and were durable. Humans figured out how to retrieve a hundred million tiny fibers from plants or animals, organize them into yarns, weave the yarns into fabric, color it, and sew a garment. It's clever stuff. It's done by hand. It's a painstaking process, especially making the yarns. There's about two miles of yarn in my shirt. The men are working in the fields. Mothers are looking after children. Who's got the time to make yarns? The unmarried women, the spinsters, get it? And that stick is the distaff. We still talk about the distaff or female side of the family. Textiles are embedded in our language. We weave through traffic. We're on tenterhooks. We have spin-offs. We follow threads. So textiles are essential. They take time and effort to make. They're valuable. How valuable? The best textiles are treasures. They're in museums. Most ordinary ones were repaired, altered, repurposed, handed down, and eventually became rags. Even rags have value. I'm old enough to remember the rag and bone man and his horse-drawn cart coming around the streets where I grew up in England. So if you want to get a textile curator excited, forget the wedding dress or the ball gown. Give them some working men's pants from a couple hundred years ago. In the 1700s, we had an industrial revolution. We harnessed steam power. What should we use it for? What's valuable? Textiles. We mechanize spinning, weaving, sewing. We invent factories and mills and cities to house the workers. And as every Rhode Island schoolchild knows, America's Industrial Revolution began at Samuel Slater's mill. In the 1800s, we figure out chemistry. What should we use this for? What's valuable? Textiles. Let's make dyes. And today's chemical giants can trace their origins to success in the dye business in the late 1800s. Let's stop the clock for a moment at 1900. Fibers are still natural, cotton, wool, linen, silk. Farming's organic. And despite this efficient, mechanized production in large textile mills, the world produces enough textile for about five pounds per person per year. That's everything. Clothes, sheets, curtains, towels. A pair of jeans is about a pound. But what do we lack? We were clothed. We knew how to be fashionable. What was missing? Not much. But we wanted more. The first step of more was not textile related. It was the process to make synthetic nitrogen fertilizer. That meant more food and our ability today to feed a population of almost 8 billion people. Incidentally, it also shuts the door to organic farming as a global supplier of food or fiber to that many people. In textiles, more was the invention of oil-based synthetic fibers, starting with nylon. These are brilliant materials. For many uses, so much better than natural fibers. We fell in love with them. When they were newly available to us after the war took them, we rioted to get them back. And polyester arrived as cheap as cotton. Meanwhile, manufacturing becomes ever more efficient. Those mills need fewer workers to spin and weave. And in the same way, other factories become less labor intensive. Production lines for cars and trucks have more robots than humans. But we still haven't developed a robot that can sew a shirt. The billions and billions of garments we wear require that some skilled human sits at a sewing machine. We chase the cheap needle, finding those humans who will work for the lowest wages. And we arrive in a 21st century textile world in which efficient farming grows cheap cotton, polyester is derived from cheap oil, highly efficient machines make low cost fabric, garments are sewn by low wage workers. And most of us can't fix a seam 
or replace a zipper or a button. Our clothes are cheaper and cheaper. A $10 t-shirt from 1990 today would cost $10. That's not true of anything else we buy. So instead of buy, keep, repair, we buy, throw it away, and buy more. Hello, fast fashion. And despite all those yellow bins, textiles are tough to recycle in any meaningful way. And the waste is part of our current microplastic pollution problem. Textiles are already micro when we throw them away. So while our population has quadrupled since 1900, our textile consumption has gone up 30-fold. More than 30 pounds per person per year, and at more than 100 in the United States. And most of the fiber we use is polyester. There's not enough land to grow more cotton. 30 times more textile. We don't eat 30 times more food. We don't live in 30 houses each. We have too much stuff in our wardrobes. How full is yours? So where do we go from here? How much textile fiber do we need? How much can the earth reasonably and sustainably produce? And sustainability is not about the quality of what you buy. If you ask the question, is this a sustainable garment? It's the wrong question. It's about the quantity. How many of these can the world provide? And the answer is less. We can happily, but not organically, grow 10 pounds per person of natural fibers. We can produce a few pounds each of synthetic fibers. They're much better in some uses, and a better use of oil and burning it to make more carbon dioxide. Does it have to be global? We cherish local food from local farmers. Why not local textiles? It's not so long since we had small mills that could take local wool, wash it, spin it, weave it, dye it, and finish it into fabrics. And here in Samuel Slater's home state, we still have a vibrant textile industry. We still produce wool and turn it into useful textiles. We have regional initiatives to do this on a bigger scale and produce high fashion garments. Maybe the pandemic has shown us that we don't need to dress so differently so often. How much of your wardrobe has gathered dust since we socialized less and zoomed more? And maybe sewing is as good as binge watching as a way of spending time that you are not socializing. There are good clothes out there, clothes that will look good and last a long time. You don't need so much. Designer Vivienne Westwood said it well. Buy less, choose well, and make it last. And I'm wearing the Harris Tweed jacket that I wore to my interview at URI in 1990.